Greetings. We're back for another project. This is going to be today is converting my F-150 halogen lights to the factory LED lights. I'm going to be doing this trying not to use Forescan, and this is going to be without buying a harness online. Uh, what we're going to be doing is creating our own harness to do exactly what I want these to do in my application. I'm trying to do it fairly low buck. I got these lights for about a hundred bucks. Shockingly, I just took a gamble on them, thought they might be broken, scratched, something. They're in pretty good condition. None of the tabs are broken. And I just verified that they work a few minutes ago. Just with a 12 volt battery, everything works well. So what we're gonna be doing, uh, like I said, is making these work on my halogen truck uh, without buying the Morimoto harness or the Grey Goose, I believe that's who it is, or Boost. Um, Raptor retrofits, one of those harnesses, they're about 300 bucks, give or take. Uh, and I don't want to be in these headlights, $500. I really just took the gamble, figure why not see if we can make these work. So what we're going to be using is, so I should start. Uh, these headlights, if you haven't seen, they have one input for everything. And the input's right here. This is a 16 pin connector. I'll leave the link to these um, in this description. <clears throat> you can get one for about 13 bucks. You see, you need about two. So you're in at about $26 for the two connectors. You need the male end of them. They look like this 16 pins. And we're going to create our own harness. So, uh, based on, so basically, each pin controls a different function of the headlights. And depending what you want to do, we can wire those pins into the factory system to get what we want. Um, comes with all these little pins that you can crimp your wires to then insert into that we can make a wiring harness this way that is at least my goal I'm not totally sure it's gonna work yet we're gonna find out so what I did to make this simple I drew out exactly so like I said in these headlights there's seven pins on the 16 pin connector being used This is what we'll be using. So turn signals pin one, two is gonna be empty. Three is for the parking lights. Um, the parking lights are just the amber halo that runs around the outside that we're gonna to set to run on fuse 109, which is a constant hot when the ignition is in the on or run position. Number four is empty, five is low beam, six is high beam, seven is ground, eight through 16 are empty. And this is what that looks like. If you're looking right at this, one through seven, one through seven, it's just like that. Black dots are your seven pins. So that's how we're gonna wire it. So this connector, it'll be opposite. It'll be one to seven from right to left. That way, when you plug it into the headlight, you have one to seven left to right. So we're gonna get started now, putting some one to two foot pigtails off this and wiring up our harness and I'll show you guys how I do that in a second. All right, we're working with these Molex MX150 connectors. There's a couple things to know. First, before you do anything, you have to remove these two pieces from the back. So this piece is clicked in the back there. Uh, there's some tabs, it'll focus on the side there and, and there. You can press in with a small screwdriver, pry this out. This is the water stop here that sits underneath it, that comes out too. And then you'll also need to remove this front fascia here, the white part. So, this is the camera. So, with this, there's four black pieces that poke through, front, these two, and then two on the sides. You'll have to use like a small screwdriver to push those out as well. And then once you do, you'll be able to just pull this piece right out. And once that's out, you have access to push these female pins through. So next I'll show you, you can crimp these. So if I pull one of them out, here's one of them. So you just crimp these around the wire, twist the wire first, put it in, crimp these with a pair of needle nose pliers and you can push them right 
into where you want to go. I'll do that in a second. And then once they're through to that point, I'll do all seven. I'll label all seven of them. And then take the white and you can press it back into place. And then after that, once I have all the wires done, I'll take the blues, water stop, feed that through all the wires, the black, push that through all the wires, cl click it together. And then I will tape all the wires together to make one good harness. So we'll get those done and I'll show you what we come up with. I try and do a better job showing you guys how to wire up one of these harnesses. So um, here I have maybe maybe a quarter to three eighths of an inch of wire strip. This is, uh, I believe, 14 gauge. What I'm gonna do, twist these up. You wanna take the connector, lay it in there just like that. Use a pair of needle nose, crimp these down. Sorry, it's not too focused. Crimp from the top. Kind of looking like that. You crimp. I work top and side. Top, side. Until you have something like that. You do the same thing to the back ones here. Fold the tabs over. Sorry. Fold the tabs over. Until they're kind of like that. Maybe a little bit more. And then you can crimp those down together. And you really just crimp these until the wire is tight. You can't pull it apart. Using the female one, so the male insert goes through there. Sorry for the camera being all wonky. We have our connector here. So like I said before, these three pieces come out. In fact, this one actually just pulled right out of this connector. So the other one must have just been stubborn. But this just pulled out with a pair of pliers. In this mess of wiring right here, here's our four we have so far. Going to find the fifth hole. Actually, it's the seventh, sorry. And just feed it through. And it should press right through until you see them exposed here. And we can see there's all five of our connectors. And that's it. I usually put them right till about that top of the connector there. And you can see that's about my, my height. Now that I have all five of these in, I'm going to take this piece. The divider here should separate all of these. Uh, let's see. This one's a little crooked. Just like that. So I push it in like this. You can see they're all divided, one into each bay. And then you can just hold the wires lightly, push this until you can't push it in, and then it clicks, and boom, you're locked in place. And then after that, you'll take the water sealer, push it through all the wires, and like I said, you'll take the black. Final piece, push it through all the wires. We'll do that real fast. And then as I just figured out, make sure you have the little bump there. Make sure this is facing the top of the connector because this will push in. Line it up. And that's it right there. Usually it clicks. Once you're pressed against it, boom, there you go. Here's your, here's your wiring harness. Should be all set to go. Now what you can do, I'm gonna label all these at the ends with painter's tape i'm gonna label what's going to where and then i will tape all these wires together to make a nice clean harness so we'll come back when that's wrapped up one of the first things we want to do uh, before we take these over the truck is get the load resistor installed these are pretty generic off amazon they'll work just fine just so we don't get hyper flash when we go to install these because the leds aren't going to draw near as much as the halogens did in uh, terms of wattage so our turn signal right here, we got the wire on the inside, slip this through, and then make sure everything's in place. Press down, I'm gonna get a pair of needle nose pliers, we'll press this, shut it. We'll take the other end when we get, actually we can do that right now. 
Um, I'm going to get this one. We'll look for the ground. Where's our ground? I forget which one's the ground. Ground. We'll put it through here. All right. I'll get the pliers. We can clamp these both down. So one end of the load resistor goes to our turn signal. One end goes to our ground. Clamp these. I'll probably take these with the harness and that should be good to go. We'll take these over to the truck and start installing. All right, so we're working on the truck. You got the right side in all nice and clean. We're working on the left side. And this is not gonna be a video showing you guys how to remove these headlights, um, just because there's plenty of videos on how to do it. However, I've seen a lot of people complain. No one really shows a good way to remove the clips on the fender flares. So I just wanted to show you how I'm doing it. So when you pull this to here, you have it all pried out and it's stuck to the flare. If you come inside here, let's see if I can show you guys where. So if you see right in, right there. So if you slip a pair of needle nose pliers in and squeeze that yellow, that tab will pop off. Same goes for, if you can see it. So I can't show it. The white one right there. There's a white tab there. So I'm going to squeeze those with the needle nose. Should pop those two out. Make it easy to get the last, the third one, if we need it. But that's how I get to these so that you don't break them. First thing I did bringing these over to the truck, I installed a new ground. So I put a little quarter inch tap screw right into this steel back here. I put an eyelid on the grounding wire so we have a good ground to start with. Next thing I did, so I took the parking light wire or the parking light light itself, this one here, zip tied it back here out of the way. Took the bulb out, put some heat shrinking tape over it. We're not gonna need that anymore, so we're not gonna use it. Turn signal, we kept this ground intact. And I put the connector and bulb I left all down here zip tied to this member as well. Reason being is because I want it to be easy if I ever want to return to the stock halogen lights. This ground's intact and I still have the two wires there. I can easily splice those back in. Now the two blue wires are up here. So this one here, this is just for the parking lights and I'm not gonna be using it. This one, which is green and blue, that one is for your turn signal. I wired that into the turn signal, just like so. On the other side, that same wire, I believe is blue. So on the other side, there's a black and yellow, there's a yellow and I think orange, and then a blue wire. The blue wire, uh, same thing, it's for the turn signal. Now for the headlights, it's kind of a similar situation. I put them, they're back here. Um, so I cut off, I left the two grounds intact again with the connector so I can put it back if I ever wanted to. For the high beam, on this side it's brown and gray. The other side I believe it's a blue wire. Uh, this side it's brown and gray. The low beam I put into the blue and brown. Um, I believe it's blue and brown, right there. Now all this is temporarily wired. You can always temporarily wire these off kind of like so. If you have any questions, if you might have it backwards, you can flip these two, just temporarily wire them like this, turn the truck on, see which one comes on on these. The upper one is your low beam, lower one's your high beam. But this is how I have it temporarily wired up, just so you guys can see it. And we're gonna test these make sure it all works before I go ahead and solder them in and heat shrink them. Definitely want to solder these because you don't want to risk them all falling apart with the vibrations of the motor up front. So right now I have low beam on and I have the turn signal, which really the turn signal is just going to be this here because the halo bar is always going to be lit. Uh, but yeah, so that's good. Uh, next thing we will get wired up the driving light now for the driving lights I went in the fuse box and I put a fuse tap on fuse 109 which is back there added this add a fuse in there like so and wire comes out got a splitter one for each side this one's gonna run down here so this light this one's gonna go over to the other end of the truck to run the other light and I'm gonna snake these along the firewall out of the way and then you can just put cover back on just kind of like so 
just snaps right back into place and you're good to go. Then you can get these back over here and then this wire is gonna go right into our DRLs. All right, we're getting these on. And one thing I wanted to mention, sorry for the airplane noise. I put some heat shrink around this extra wire coming off the turn signal connector, um, just because I don't want anything to touch it uh, or to touch anything. Uh, but yeah, I got the arrow in, OB man. We're gonna keep on wiring. Actually, exactly. one of the things I'm doing instead of soldering these, I'm actually using these solder connectors. What they are, I don't know if you guys have seen them. They're heat shrink with some solder on the inside. You heat the whole thing up, the solder melts, solders the wires, heat shrink melts, or sorry, shrinks. Shrinks the wires, gives you a nice connection. And then I'm just wrapping them in electrical tape just as an added measure. All right, with all of our connections made, you should have five ground. Then down here you have high beam, low beam, turn signal, and then driving lights, which I believe is this one up top here, going all the way back. That's really it. Then you have your connector. You have these back there, your connector going into the headlights. Now we can work on reinstalling these and seeing how they work. We're now with the headlights on. There you have it. Turn them off. And you still have your daytime running lights. All right, that's it for this one.